Platinum did it. They, uh, they did it. This, this game right here, Bayonetta 3 for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, this game's pretty damn good. Let's talk about it. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Botox Media. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing Bayonetta 3. Couple of disclaimers. One, not using my own gameplay footage because I know Nintendo will take me down if I do that. Um, I think I'm I think I'm good to just talk about it and give you know some some thoughts. So hopefully they don't take this down. But just saying that I will be using gameplay trailer footage for this video. Um, and two, I'm not, I'm, this is not going to be very spoiler heavy at all. I might at the very end give a spoiler warning if I decide I want to talk about um, the ending stuff at the very end. But that'll be in the heat of the moment. I'll give you a warning if I do. Um, if you're very if you if you're worried about like mechanical spoilers and all that and gameplay stuff. Click off the video, I guess. If you're that sensitive about it, I completely understand. I'm not going to go in depth or anything, but I might talk about some like weapons or something that I'm not sure if they even showed in the trailers. Um, and if they, if I talk about something plot related that they did not show in the trailers, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> so basically, if you're ready to spoilers, don't watch this video. I'm going to be very light as possible, but I'll try to keep it to a minimum uh, until I get to like the spoiler section, right? Um, so Bayonetta 3, uh, history with Bayonetta real quick. I played Bayonetta 1 and 2 for the first time, finished them for the first time earlier this summer, and I enjoyed them. I don't think they're as good as most people say. A lot of people think Bayonetta 2 is one of the greatest action games ever made. I don't agree with that. Um, I actually always liked Astral Chain more. And, uh, when they were <laughs> the reveal for Bayonetta 3, I was a little salty because they used Lappy in the trailer. And that kind of hurt me. Uh, although I'm pretty confident they're definitely making Astral Chain 2 at this point. There's, I'm sure they are. You know, that, that game did incredibly well. So, Bayonetta 3, I've been excited for, but kind of cautiously. I figured, you know, following up Astral Chain, Platinum's next game with Nintendo, they'd probably do better than that. And I have to say, they did it. This is... This is probably the best action game I've ever played. Or a game like this. You know, the DMC kind of games. Platinum games kind of games. You know exactly that that style. Uh, this is a fantastic game. I would even go as far as to say it's, it's a masterpiece. I, I really think that. Um, as someone who's not typically really into these kinds of games you know i'm not like super good at them you know i'm not doing these crazy combos doing these crazy clips um in fact i'm pretty bad at action games like this um i played on standard um throughout the entire game i never and uh sp sp difficulty spoiler i don't know um you do unlock like a, a a super difficulty after you beat the game so i don't think i'll ever be trying that because i don't think i would fare very well um but uh yeah i'm not very good at these games so typically um i think that does hinder my enjoyment a little bit but uh, Bayonetta the three, I think the balancing is fantastic throughout the entire game. I struggled a couple times, uh, but I was mostly getting like silver or gold throughout my game on, on each chapter, um, or each verse or whatever, right? But uh, let's talk about what this game does better than every other uh, the game like it. So Bayonetta one and two, I I remember having this this issue where to get new moves for Bayonetta and um, weapons and stuff, you typically just buy them in the shop, and you don't actually have to do that. Um, so for me as a player, it kind of gave me a lot of like, it was just a little bit much <laughs> to just expect me to go buy it. In this game, they, they streamlined everything. Everything's on a skill tree and a menu. Um, you can buy costumes in the shop, in the shop. You can buy, um, accessories in the shop. You can buy, you know, witch hearts and the moon, moon pearls for your magic meter and all that. You can buy all that stuff in the shop, but all of your weapons and stuff, you get through the story, all of your, um, uh, your, all your new abilities for each class, each class or each weapon has its own skill tree, which is awesome. Uh, you can upgrade those just in the menu by getting the um the little red icon. I don't even know what they are, hearts or something. I don't know. Um, currency. <laughs> um, so just that alone, being able to um quickly you know access all these weapons just through the story, you know that you're getting it at the time you should be getting it, and then you're playing with it and you're trying it out. Um, and then being able to up upgrade it as however much you want. Um, and a more streamlined fashion so i'm not overwhelmed by looking at all this stuff in the shop it just makes the entire flow of this game i think much better than bayonetta 1 and 2 it is so nice um how how they set all this up and then of course you have the infernal demons which is a new mechanic um where you uh you hold zl and you can uh, summon demons that bayonetta has i guess was, was i don't know even know what the actual lore implication is does she contract them i'm not sure um <laughs> so you have these demons that you can summon and use in, in any combat um this is like a super close range area and that also adds just a ton to this game um and then you know even just dashing around the overworld you double tap zr um i mean it's, it's like this in, in bayonetta 1 and 2 where you you sprint and you become like the the wolf thing or whatever the um not a wolf. I don't find the cat thing. I don't know what the hell it is. You know what I'm talking about, though. Um, you have that for every weapon. So, you, uh, trying to spoil stuff. Um, 
Uh, well, okay, we'll just start with like the 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 base weapons. You have your um color my world guns, um or class guns, whatever weapon. Um, when you dash with that, you're like a butterfly, and you just and you know add a butterfly, and you just dash through. But every demon or every weapon has its own like dash, so it just makes each weapon type feel very distinct and very fun to use and very fun to experiment with other it's very it's very fun to just mess with all these weapons and beta 1 2 that was completely lost on me because it was just all optional for the most part um so having that all just be a streamlined system fantastic and um just the combat and flow of this game with that because of your infernal demons and you can use them in combat now um it just feels incredible, man. <laughs> this is, it just, it's a feel good game. And I guess I'll talk about performance real quick here. Um, game looks fantastic. Definitely looks better than Bandit 1 and 2. And it runs fantastic. I'm excited to see Digital Foundry's video. I don't know if it, it's locked 60, but it certainly feels like it. This game runs very well. Um, resolution, I think, may be the thing that dips a little bit at times. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the performance of this game is fantastic for the Switch. So, um, game fucking awesome <laughs> freaking awesome it is um the, just the combat and the flow of everything is fantastic i want to talk about the world design though for a little bit so obviously the, the game's still structured by chapters um number of chapters spoiler alert click off there's 14 so it's technically the the shortest bayonetta game though those chapters have more in them there's more to do and uh they're a little bit longer and because of that so um i think this game actually might end up being a little bit longer for most people than the other two games the level design in Bayonetta 1 and 2, I think, is another thing that I, I didn't particularly love. Sometimes they shoehorn in these these not-so-great puzzles, and just this uh, this exploration, in my opinion, wasn't great in Bayonetta 1 and 2. Um, in this game, the areas are... Uh, well, it depends on the chapter, of course, but they're t I would say they're typically a little bit more open. Um, but exploring them feels better. There's more to find. There's items, you know, all this stuff. I mean, there's always items, but, like, something about it just feels completely more it just it's just better <laughs> you know um you have the niflheim or whatever uh, little challenges you can find you have the cube still where you get your witch hearts or just items in general um tons of easter eggs and, and, and fan service stuff spread throughout the entire game um which is awesome you know i won't spoil any of that because that's stuff you want to find on your own but just really cool easter eggs you can find um especially in the first couple chapters um <laughs> so world design level design combat best best in the biz they've topped it off it's fantastic let's talk about like you know platinum does this thing where they just put other genres into the game as like boss fights and stuff there's two in particular that i want to talk about once again probably not shown in, in trailers so spoilers i'm not going to spoil the context or anything but i want to say what they are because they are damn good so the first one is um and i'm not going to go into in detail uh they do like a godzilla fight to one like side side uh, view fight with uh two demons um which is awesome and it's like the health bar is like a fighting game that's awesome the second one this is more towards the end of the game eh, like chapter 10 probably um there's a rhythm game <laughs> they just put a rhythm game in it it's so good and the music that plays right oh my goodness so stuff like that is is strong in this game you know it's like the shmup ish sections and, and all these things that that platinum does um and it's it's all exemplified best here it is fantastic how they did it all Let's talk about the music. Um, I know a lot of people have been wondering about like the the next Moon song. I think it's Serenade and Moonlight. Um, is the or is, yeah whatever it is. Um, the music in this game is the best in the series. <laughs> I will I will say that once again. Um, a lot of there's a couple of vocal songs. There's a ton of songs that don't include vocals but are still awesome that pump you up. Um, and just I mean, it's hard to review music. You kind of have to hear it for yourself. And and the context of what's happening in the game at the time of when it happens is important. But music in this game best they've done in my opinion and i'm excited for y'all to hear it and uh cry while hearing it because the music is fucking awesome um and then let's talk about the the plot just for a little bit here um wow so that's another thing with bayonetta one and two um it, it almost feels like the plot isn't it's not really the focus of those games that feels a little changed in this one i would say um they definitely put a, a big focus on plot this was shown in the the most recent game trail and the most recent like story trailer, but I don't think we knew it beforehand. So if you haven't watched the most recent story trailer at this point, I would say click off the video if you don't want spo story spoilers in general. Um, so the entire plot is basically there's all these multiversal bayonettas and you're getting these chaos gears um, to go to the alphaverse or whatever. And I'm not going to go too in-depth, but basically this allows them to have a ton of Bayonetta in this game. There's a ton of Bayonetta. There's like a Chinese Bayonetta. There's a, there's a train Bayonetta. Um, 
There's a lot of bayonetas. And there's a lot that you don't even get to like uh, like meet. There's because there's a scene um, where you see more of them. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what a good, just inherently good uh, structure for a plot or like setup. Bayonetta's the main character. Bayonetta's fun. So seeing just a ton of bayonetas and cool outfits doing dances is it's what you want. It's just a ton of fucking bayonetta, and that's awesome. Um, and seeing our main bayonetta interact with them is just a ton of fun. Um, and then of course you know this. I don't even count this as a spoiler, but like, <laughs> you get all the costumes, obviously. So having all those costumes, costumes is awesome. Um, and then the ending of the game, I'm not gonna spoil this. You'll see it for yourself. The game's not very long, you know, 10, 12, 10, 15 hours. The ending of the game is incredible. Um, I just have to say that. I will say that. The, the the ending of the plot for this game. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, as someone who's not even like that invested in the band of the lore and all that, which I mean, there, I know there are people that really get into that stuff. Um, as somebody who's not that invested in it, wow, they knocked it out of the park. The final chapter of this game, it's like an hour and a half almost with all the cutscenes. And in general, there's a lot more cutscenes in this game. Um, they really went hard in that final chapter, I will say that. Um, and then I want to talk about Viola for a minute here. Uh, Viola is a new character in this game that they introduced uh, in the trailers. At first, I wasn't sure if I was going to like her. And, you know, at first I didn't entirely love her but i didn't dislike her by the end of the game you love viola viola's awesome and i think this goes for all of the characters and this is what i said in my bayonetta 1 and 2 video that i made a few months back bayonetta has incredible characters the cast of bayonetta is what makes bayonetta so memorable and so strong um even just like you know enzo and rodon and and jean and and luca i'll tell you right now luca fans eating in this game if you're a luca fan bro you're <laughs> you're set luca luca fans eating but I would even just say every fan of every character is eating. They, they do so much fan service in this game, but not in like an overbearing way. Um, and, and Bayonetta is an over-the-top game to begin with, um, but they still make it all feel like natural. So this is very rambly, even by my standards, without trying to spoil major plot stuff. So um, I think I'm going to end it there. Bayonetta 3 is a masterpiece. I don't I don't think I did a proper job conveying that. So play the game when it comes out. Support support this incredible game. Don't boycott it. Oh, Jennifer Hale's performance, awesome, by the way. Love Jennifer Hale. Uh, so I'll end the video there. I'm very excited to see reviews for this game drop on probably Tuesday or Monday um, and see what everybody else thinks because um, this is a doozy of a video game. Uh, I think I said this at the start of the video. If it weren't for Xenoblade 3, this would be my game of the year. I, I will say that. So, um, yeah. Let me know what you all think. Are you excited for Bandit of 3? Down in the comments below. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you think. I'm I'm excited to see everybody th play it and then get those lore breakdowns that I'm too stupid to really uh, understand in the gameplay. So, <laughs> you know, because um, it's been it's very much a thing where like you read like the text blurbs on, the, on like the beta books and all that. All right. Um, so with that said, going to end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed please let me know down in the comments below. Subscribe by, uh, hitting, well, subscribe by hitting the subscribe button, but subscribe for more Nintendo Switch coverage and, and, and game news and all that. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at BookTalksMedia. You can join my Discord. That is linked down below. And until next time, folks, peace.